So far we discussed the L2 regularization and described its positive properties. However, this does not mean that it is always the best choice. In image processing, for example, the L2 regularization leads to the winner filter, which is known to perform very poorly. Therefore, we aim to suggest alternative regularization terms with the hope to keep some of the good properties that the L2 had. This brings us to convex functions. As we will see, convexity implies a unique solution which we so much desire. We start our discussion with convex sets. A set omega is said to be convex if for every pair of points in it, the line connecting them is also contained in the set. We see here two examples that illustrate this. As an interesting example, the set of all solutions to the linear system AX equals B forms a convex set. In order to see this, define omega as this set and take any two points in it, X1 and X2. These two points must satisfy the equation AX equals B. Multiplying the first of these equations by T and the second by 1 minus T and adding, we get that the whole line between x1 and x2 also belongs in omega. Notice that in this specific case, we do not even need to restrict the parameter t to the interval 0 to 1. We move now to define convexity of functions. We choose any two points x1 and x2 in the domain omega and define the line stretched between them parameterized by t in the range 0 to 1. A point on this line is x of t. If the value of the function along this line, f of x of t, is upper bounded by a similarly weighted average of f of x1 and f of x2, the function is convex. An alternative definition of convexity that relates to the definition of convex sets is this. A function is convex if its epigraph is a convex set. In order to better explain these two definitions, we move to examples. This example describes the behavior of a convex function. As can be seen, the function is upper bounded by the line stretched between f of x1 and f of x2. The second example shows a violation of this property and thus the function is not convex. The epigraph is the set of x and y contained above the function and as can be seen, the convexity of the function translates into the convexity of a set. If the function is smooth and its derivatives are available, one can provide alternative and more intuitive definitions for the convexity of a function. Using the gradient, if the tangent hyperplane in every point x bounds the function from below, f of x is convex. Here are two examples to demonstrate this. Using the second derivative, we get the simplest definition for convexity. If the Haitian is a positive semi-definite matrix for all x in the domain omega, one can conclude that the function is convex. We have seen several definitions for the convexity of functions and all relied on inequalities. We say that a function is strictly convex if these inequalities do not allow equality apart from on the barriers. The examples given here demonstrate three cases of functions that are convex, but not strictly so. Here is an example to illustrate the various ideals we described. Is this function convex? Is it strictly so? We shall answer these questions by computing the Haitian of the function, given this time by B transpose B. This matrix is positive semi-definite for all B, and thus the function is definitely convex. Moreover, if B has a full column rank, B transpose B is positive definite, and thus the function becomes strictly convex. Here is an interesting question. What if we remove the square? Think about it. At this stage, you might be wondering, why have we gone into this discussion in the first place? So here is the answer. When minimizing a convex function over a convex domain, we get that there are no local minima points, and all the optimal solutions concentrate in a convex set. However, far more important for us is the following claim. If the function is strictly convex, the optimal solution is unique. The implications for us are very clear. If the regularization function j of x is strictly convex, then the best solution among the set ax equals b is unique, just as it was for the L2 case. 
Armed with this knowledge, we can seek regularization expressions that are convex or even strictly so. A specific family of functions that we will be interested in is the LP norm, for P being 1 and above. This is the expression, and as can be seen, the L2 norm is obtained as a special case for P equals 2. All this family leads to convex functions. A special case of interest is obtained when P equals 1, leading to the L1 norm, which sums the absolute values of the entries of the vector. A second special case is obtained when P goes to infinity. Then we get the max norm that chooses the maximal absolute entry. Few comments are in order here. First, the L1 is indeed convex, as claimed, but not strictly so. Indeed, for all these norms, we do not get strict convexity unless we raise the expression by the pth power. One last comment. For p smaller than 1, this expression is not convex. As we show next, this implies that for p smaller than 1, this is not a formal norm. A norm in a vector space is a function operating on the vectors and yielding scalar values, interpreted as the vector's length. Such a function must obey three axioms in order to be a formal norm. Its value cannot be negative, and it is zero only for the zero vector. The function must obey the homogeneity property that states that the value of the norm for a scaled vector is simply the scaled value of the norm of the vector itself. Notice that the scale is put in absolute value so as not to violate the first axiom. The last and most known property that norms should obey is the triangle inequality. The norm of a sum of vectors is shorter than the sum of the vector's norms. Interestingly, as shown here, from these axioms, we get that the norm function is necessarily convex, which explains our claim regarding p smaller than 1 not being a norm. 